वेलकम बैक एवरी वन आफ्टर अ लॉन्ग टाइम एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू लुक इन टू वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट सब्जेक्ट्स ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग दैट इज स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ मटेरियल्स और मैकेनिक्स ऑफ सॉलिड एंड वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद फंडामेंटल ऑफ दिस सब्जेक्ट एंड दिस स्टार्ट विद स्ट्रेसिस एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी विल लुक एट डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ स्ट्रेसिस एंड देयर Uh, distribution and uh, in briefly we will try to understand what how they act or uh, uh, how we design the things and what all uh, considerations we need to make in the real world so in order to get more videos on technical topics please subscribe this channel and uh, let us begin so first type of stress in the category of stresses is the axial stress as it is clear from the name the axial stress is that stress which acts along the axis of any body so before we get uh, uh, into axial and shear and all that let us uh, try to understand what is stress so stress is that uh, uh it is the intensity of force which is distributed over the entire area of cross section so whenever any force p is applied to this body and uh, and its distribution is measured over the area a at any cross section the resultant distribution the resultant force per unit area is called as stress so as you can see in this diagram we have uh, p and p dash applied on the both end so from rotary body equilibrium you know that p will be equal to p dash and uh, the area is uniform here that is a so the stress will be uh, p over a as per our definition that is a force per unit area the unit of force is in newton and the area is in meter therefore the stress unit is equal to newton per meter square or pascal so 1 pascal will be equal to 1 newton per meter square now uh, try to understand the stress as that uh, if you are pulling a thing if a object is pulled at the end the forces then it will develop tensile forces or it will be in tension and if the object or any body rigid body is being compressed at the end then it is going to be in compression tensile forces are in general considered as positive and uh, compressive forces are taken as ne negative or similarly for stresses also so this is a convention only you can uh, change as per your convenience but uh, all over uh, world this is followed so better keep it is as it is so now till now we have looked at this but uh, here we have assumed one thing in this definition we have assumed that uh, at any cross section at this cross section the distribution of stress is uniform that at every point the stress is of equal magnitude uh, this is an idealized stress distribution it does not happen in reality what happens is that uh, in order to calculate uh, stress at a point you calculate the force acting at that point and uh, you take the area of that infinitesimally small part portion and you apply the limit of that area going to zero in this way you will be able to calculate sigma at that point at a point where you are you have taken these parameters sigma at this value will be different sigma here sigma here will be different so actual stress distribution is not uniform because of various reasons that we do not normally find those reasons and their distribution that why they are happening because of their large number of factors to be taken into account so let us see how the stresses vary 
uh, and what are uh, assumptions that we make so this is a solid object having uh, forces at both the end so if you take the section at this point that is near the near the point where force has been applied then there the distribution in stress is large the distribution says that at the end the force is, is uh, less stress is less as compared to the center or directly in uh, line with the application of force but as you go away from the application point of application of force you can see that stresses at the end and at the center are almost uh, equal or you can say they are, there is no much variation there is not much variation in the stress distribution but at the starting and at the end we are seeing that uh, the stress distribution or stress variation is like this so this is against our assumption or uh, we have assumed uniform stress distribution so in order to account for these differences we we considered that the force p is applied at the centroid of any object then stress distribution will be linear and we will be able to calculate sigma average by p over a where a is the area of this cross section so if this condition is met then this formula is okay but uh, uh, what happens that if we have this type of uh, situation that force is away from uh, center of centroid then in addition to normal stress we will also have bending stresses so in later chapters we will be seeing what are bending stresses and what is bending moment so here bending moment m will be acting and uh, this uh, normal p force will be there so the stress generated will not be axial stress only axial stress there will be bending stress also so we need to keep the conditions in which uh, forces have been applied or body is under what conditions so that we can uh, calculate their stress distribution and we are uh, currently looking at very simple uh, situation or some basic scenario that a body is being applied at by the p forces through the centroid and this line of load is passing through the centroid so we can easily use this formula that sigma average will be p by a if we know actual stress distribution if we happen to know actual stress distribution then we can also calculate um, forces by using integral but this rarely happens so uh, we will we will be using this formula only uh, whenever we need as far as uh, this level of course content is concerned so i hope you got the idea behind the stress distribution over a cross section and uh, why we assume average stress and uh, how the stresses in actual vary so there is difference between two but uh, for the sake of simplicity and for calculation purposes we take uh, average stress as the force divided over the entire area okay moving to next topic it is uh, another type of stress which is called as shear stress now shear stress is that uh, please try to understand the basic difference uh, with the comparison to axial stress in shear we have the forces which are trying to shear off this body along this plane or along this cross section they are not trying to in, in axial stress what we had that the forces were trying to squeeze or stretch the body okay along the axis but now we have a condition in which forces are trying to shear off at this plane break apart from this particular portion as you can see here so if we draw the free body diagram here but we are going to get is that p if p is the force applied in this direction then it surface itself we will have the p along this area a so area of this uh, cross section is a here and uh, p is uh, the resultant of the applied force p 
therefore uh, using the similar concept that stress is force per unit area we have average shear stress is p over a and the units are same that is p is in newton and a is in meter square or and you units are not rigid you can keep units as per your convenience but you have to keep the calculations in your mind so uh, you got the basic sense that what is shear stress now let us come to single shear and double shear difference between these two single shear means that uh, the forces are trying to same force at the pair of force is trying to shear off the body at one plane this is the plane where these two forces are trying to shear off this bolt okay so this uh, what what is going to happen is that area of cross section a only one area of cross section a is involved in resisting resisting the shear so as per definition our as per our definition shear stress will be force divided by area so only one area is involved here therefore we are keeping the uh, formula same that is tau is equal to f by a but a uh, single sh no, but this was the case in single shear uh, applying the same uh, concept in double shear the only difference is that the same forces are trying to trying to shear of the body at two planes that is this plane number 1 and plane number 2 so if your body is being sheared off at two places this is your this will be your free body diagram and uh, if like, it is like this if this force is being prevented by these two uh, c and d component okay so here we will be having uh, so this area and this area these two areas are involved in prevention of shear force therefore the distribution will be taken up by the two times of the area of the bolt hence we have the formula is f by 2a because both area it are involved in the resisting shear force okay so uh, this is a, one of the most uh, important concept to understand and uh, from here the things will be clear now let us move to another bearing stress bearing stress there are a lot of mechanical part or situations where the a rigid body has to bear against against another body okay you you got the point so two body surfaces are resisting here you see that this uh, nut bolt arrangement will be resisted by this wedge so the area resist uh, area which is resisting this is going to be this uh, cylindrical portion area so if i draw here this area is going to be resisted by this so it is semi circular portion so what it is saying that uh, so how to calculate the area this is the circular area so you need to calculate the projection of this so it is it's very easy to calculate the projection d is your diameter and uh, t is your thickness of the plate so it is going to be height therefore area which is resisting this bolt is equal to d into t and from the definition uh, what we are getting is that uh, bearing pressure or bearing stress will be equal to the load applied p applied divided by t into d or the contact area you can see contact now these stresses are fundamentally the same their units are same and they are uh, behavior or their calculation involved will be same but uh, in different scenarios in strength of materials and in mechanical and civil world you need to understand the type of their their mode of working basically so you are better able to appreciate the effect of uh, such stresses on the object okay so if we know if there are certain properties associated with shear stresses and bearing stress so if we know them they know that which stress is acting where then this whole idea of studying 
the stresses will be useful so that is why we study different type of stress and from here we will go to studying strains and their uh, bending moment shear moment everything is connected uh, from here so the idea of stresses should be equally clear to you okay so now moving to another topic in here we are going to see that uh, if we know the forces and the area of a straight plane or you can say vertical plane let us say then uh, what is going to be uh, stress on a plane inclined with angle theta from vertical so you got the point here is your plane and this is inclined at angle theta with this vertical line so you have to calculate this force uh, this stress on this plane basically on this uh, on this plane vertical plane we already know that norm axial stress will be equal to py and shear stress will be equal to zero okay because there is no stress in the plane for shear stress we need the forces to be in the plane but uh, let us consider the question uh, statement in this manner that if we resolve the p if we resolve the p along the uh, along the direction perpendicular to plane we are going to get the normal force and that is going to be p cos theta and uh, if we resolve along the plane that is in shear force you can say that is going to be p sin theta now it is clear so we need area a area along theta will be equal to a by cos theta from the you know from this rule of geometry there we are seeing this right angle triangle and uh, if your area a is this and angle theta is this this is going to be a by cos theta i hope it is clear so now axial stress is going to be p cos theta by a by cos theta so it is going to be cos theta and uh, shear stress is going to be p sin theta by a by cos theta in, into sin uh, sorry into cos theta so we have got the formula for uh, inclined stresses on an inclined plane in real world the angle theta will be given to you and uh, just plug in the value of cos theta and sin theta here and uh, you can get your answer so a special case uh, you would like to consider that if theta is equal to 45 degree what happens then so the situation is like this sigma will be equal to p by 2a and uh, tau will also be equal to p by 2a so this is a special case and uh, for different angle of theta the values will be different now what this is rep uh, representing that when the consideration was on normal uh, vertical plane tau was zero but as we are taking the value on inclined plane we are getting the value of shear stress it means that the failure will not depend on the the plane on which the force original force has been applied so you need to uh, be uh, looking for that that on which plane the force is going to be maximum first part we applied the plane force on this plane but you see the shear stress is zero here but uh, p by 2 here so this is a, a separate topic for another time that we will be looking as we move ahead at maximum principal stresses and principal strain okay for now uh, this much is sufficient for the introduction part okay moving ahead now uh, one thing you would like to say that uh, we have a free body okay or general body diagram and uh, this body is being acted by these forces p1 p2 p3 p4 and let us say that i say you this these body are equilibrium that there is a state of equilibrium so what is the 
stress at a point Q. Okay, suppose we have a point Q. What is going to be the state of stress or how many parameters we need to define so that we exactly know the state of stress for any point inside the this general body under the state of equilibrium. So from this diagram we can move to this diagram. Here what we are, we are saying that for point Q let us take this small infinitesimally small element. We have taken this element because it uh, we will be able to better represent the state of stresses on this cube. Okay, but you uh, consider it to be the point Q only which is infinitesimally small for the consideration of calculation of stress. So from this diagram you see that uh, on every face there are three faces. Okay, and then uh, on every face we have three component. So how many component will be needed? 3 into 3 so we are getting 9 so is it that we need 9 component of stresses to define the state of stress under the general body or in the free body diagram it is not so we do not need 9 we need 6 only so why it is so that instead of 9 we need 6 but as per this diagram we uh, are getting 9 component of stresses you need to first of all understand the terminology for this diagram let us say that this phase as seen in this diagram is perpendicular to x so the uh, normal stress will be designated by sigma x okay because sigma x means the first notation this is this means the uh, that phase is perpendicular to x direction okay and here we are having sigma minus sigma x to get means minus means uh, the stress is opposite to the direction of x axis or the negative side similarly for sigma y that uh, the face is perpendicular to the direction of y similarly for sigma z so sigma x sigma y and sigma z these are normal stresses perpendicular to face so they are required to present the normal uh, normal stress now let us come to shear stresses on each plane each plane we have two shear stress suppose uh, this is uh, you, i am representing this xz plane okay or uh, plane perpendicular to x axis you can say this is your x axis and this face is perpendicular to x axis now the forces will be like this or let me draw the axis x is here y is here and z is here so if you are representing the shear stress it is going to be like this tau and the first notation what you will write is going to be the the, uh, the notation for plane so plane is perpendicular to x axis therefore you are writing x and uh, if the force is shear stress is acting in this direction then you will write y and if the shear stress is acting in this direction you you are going to write z okay so this notation is clear and if the shear stresses are acting opposite to this direction you you just uh, write minus sign to the values of tau xy and tau xz respectively now what you are seeing that uh, you want, you got the terminology and one thing you have to notice that uh, shear stress never act in isolation that shear stresses are all, always acting in pair these two shear stresses and these two uh, these pairs so it is better represented here in uh, x y plane perpendicular to z axis here you see that tau x y and tau y x tau x y and tau y x so in order to ensure this uh, in order to ensure an equilibrium tau x y will have to be equal to 
टो वाई एक्स देन ओनली देन ओनली इक्लियरम ऑफ बॉडी इज मेंटेन सो फ्रॉम सिक्स शेयर स्ट्रेसेस वी नो रिड्यूस टू थ्री बाय थ्री शेयर स्ट्रेसेस बिकॉज शेयर स्ट्रेसेस नेवर एक्ट अलोन ऑन देर ऑन दे एक्ट इन पेयर टू मेंटेन द इक्लिब्रियम ऑफ बॉडी सो फ्रॉम सिक्स शेयर स्ट्रेसेस टू थ्री शेयर स्ट्रेसेस सो थ्री नॉर्मल स्ट्रेसेस प्लस थ्री शेयर स्ट्रेसेस टोटल सिक्स काइंड ऑफ स्ट्रेसेस आर रिक्वायर्ड टू डिफाइन द स्टेट ऑफ स्ट्रेस सो दिस वॉज द डिस्कशन रिगार्डिंग द कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ स्ट्रेसेस एंड नाउ लेट एस सी वन एग्जाम्पल दैट इज सपोज दिस बॉडी इज देयर एंड फोर्स पी इज एक्टिंग सो फॉर अ small element inside if we are taking the face if the orientation of element is like this then sigma x will be equal to py and tau will be zero as i have told in previous example what if i if i rotate the angle by 45 degree face then shear stress and normal stress will be generated and they both are going to be equal so this uh, this will come under the uh, principal stress and strain and we are going to see it later therefore the uh, component of stress uh, this example is given here to stress on the point that component of stress also depend on depend on your inclination inclination of uh, of plane on which stress on which stresses are being calculated okay so let us move ahead we uh, look for the what are the design criteria for designing a thing or the designing a building so suppose uh, i am designing a object i have to manufacture an object which is used to be which is to be used in a machine or uh, in uh, or building let's say so how i am going to design it so first of all uh, i will consider what is the nature of material what is the material here okay so nature of materials means whether it is steel or concrete or aluminium okay so first of all find the material and then perform test on it find the material or the second is perform test on it so test means uh, that specimen of the material is subjected to certain forces in the lab and the ultimate uh, stress or the ultimate breaking point ultimate shear stress and normal stress are calculated using the same concept as we have seen so ultimate uh, if you are uh, trying to determine the Uh, ultimate tensile strength then you are going to stretch the sp part, uh, specimen by p and at the point where it breaks you are going to calculate sigma ultimate by p divided by a okay similarly for shear stresses there are test and you go, you get to perform ultimate uh, stress ultimate force divided by area so once you have uh, once you have performed these stress uh, stresses you know the material properties and sigma u and tau u are your ultimate uh, ultimate load which this material can carry now you are going to have to find the maximum stress generated in the body by the application of these multiple forces and moments which this body has to bear during the course of action so by all the analysis you come to the conclusion that uh, sigma allowable or sigma stress that is uh, that is actually coming here and shear stress that is coming here so there needs to be a margin between ultimate and allowable at how much we can allow okay so that there is certain factor of safety this is a very important concept in every branch of engineering that you need to have a factor of safety so although theoretically you can go up to this ultimate load but you need to keep a margin between these 
ultimate load and allowable load so this factor of safety is uh, the main thing or the design criteria as per the various design codes what you have to take you have to study your own country's design code so for uh, different important type of structures and importance of structure the design codes and and every country and region they give their own factor of safety so let us say that i need uh, to 1.5 to 2 times factor of safety so if my sigma u is uh, ultimate uh, or ultimate load or ultimate stress which can which this material can take so i will what i am going to give this body is 0.5 sigma u okay i it means that i will restrict my forces in such a way that uh, allowable load or allowable stress generated is not greater than this value okay so how uh, can you ensure this you cannot reduce forces so the only method is to increase increase the size of member and there are other method also but for a bit crude understanding this is sufficient now let us see on what factors this uh, uh, factor of safety this depends because this is a very important factor of safety depends on properties of member that uh, what which member it is it is is it tensile member compressive member or uh, it is going to be resisting torsion so what is this what role this member is performing okay so this is one criteria now there are certain situations in which uh, number of loading uh, that is called as fatigue you know fatigue that that certain components of machine are stress are subjected to multiple cyclic loading okay and these cyclic loadings generate fatigue in the structure so it is not necessary that they are going to fail at maximum allot l Uh, allowable load only they may fail well below the allowable load so you need to consider this how the loading is being done on the uh, component on the type of failure is that uh, what type of uh, failure is going it is going to be okay so whether it is shear failure or buckling failure or a tension tensile failure or a mix of those two so what type of failure mechanism are you going to consider and we have to take into account this this thing that although we uh, have come to a great level of advancement in trying to understand the nature of material and uh, we also know that we are having a great deal of computational power but still we are uh, still we have this uh, factor that our methods are still uncertain and at best it is a approximation and at worst it is just a uh, luck that uh, this member has survived so in order to account for this uncertainty in the analysis method we have to look for factor of safety or you have to increase or decrease as per your uh, as per your requirement to be taken care of that poor maintenance also affect the rate of failure of parts so if there is machines and these components are not being maintained properly so you designed it for uh, suppose 10 years but due to corrosion and rust and other problems this this life its life will get reduced so you have to take into account that people are not going to maintain it so therefore you have to increase your factor of safety okay or if you know well in advance that maintenance is going to be good or a standard protocol is will be followed so you can adjust your factor of safety accordingly okay so now we come to the end of this uh, brief introduction about concept of stresses and uh, i hope uh that uh, i am going to be thorough in this uh, time 
and I will be finishing strength of material and uh, I am going to really upload a new video on a new topic therefore please subscribe and uh, keep following thank you thank you very much